As interesting and dramatic as the group stage of the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations was, nothing could have prepared us for what the knockout stages had in store. Some exciting ties had already been set up in the round of 16, as Africa's finest geared up to face one another. The drama did not even take long to begin. The first game was between Group D winners, Angola, who had been one of the most entertaining sides till that point, and Namibia, who had qualified at the expense of 2004 champions Tunisia. It took only 17 minutes for the hearts of spectators worldwide to begin racing. Namibia's marksman Peter Shalulile beat a hesitant Kialonda Gaspar to a duel, ending up one-on-one -on -one with goalkeeper Nebru just outside the box. He opted for a chip over the onrushing Nebru, who stretched his hands out to save it. The problem was, Nebru was outside the box as well. He had stepped too far out in his eagerness to thwart Shalulile that he had been caught out. The referee blew for a foul and sent Nebru off. Angola were now down to 10 men and in serious trouble. Substitute goalkeeper, Signori, immediately had to make a brilliant save from the resulting free kick. It looked very much like advantage Namibia at this point, but Angola wouldn't back down. They stayed true to their style and eventually found a breakthrough before halftime following some neat interplay that set up Jelsin Dalla for a tap-in. And just over a minute later, Namibia themselves had a red card. Lubeni Aokongo received the second yellow card of the game for his recklessness and was sent off. They doubled from the resulting free kick through Jelsin Dalla again who headed off a Freddy assist once again. Namibia were now in trouble. The second half produced more of the same, with Angola with more of the initiative and Namibia barely hanging on. Eventually, Angola ended any hopes of a Namibian comeback with a third goal, a beautifully taken goal by Mabululu, which was so good that it went viral. Precision of the finish and the celebration that followed gave new meaning to aesthetics. Next up was a legendary rivalry, a game between Nigeria and Cameroon. This tie had always produced fireworks, the most famous of which was the 2000 AFCON final held in Nigeria when Cameroon beat the hosts on penalties, albeit in controversial circumstances. That was the third time Nigeria had lost an AFCON final to Cameroon. In fact, of the four AFCON finals Nigeria had lost, three had been against Cameroon in 1984, in 1988, and in 2000. The other was against hosts Algeria in 1990. Interestingly, whenever they met outside of the final, Nigeria always prevailed, most recently in the 2019 edition, when Nigeria won 3-2 in the same round. The Cameroonians were coming into this game with some momentum and on a high after eliminating Gambia through a stoppage time goal in their final group game. This day though, belong to the Nigerians. After seeing their early goal by Shemi Ajayi chalked off for offside, they dominated much of the first half before finding a breakthrough. It came in the form of Ademola Lukman, who benefited from the work of CAF African Footballer of the Year, Victor Osimen. He had pressed swiftly and won the ball before setting up Lukman for the finish. After that, Cameroon labored, searching for the equalizer as their hopes began to fade. Coached by the captain of the 2000 Cameroonian side, who had scored the winning penalty against Nigeria, Rigobert Song, they looked toothless until their hopes eventually got extinguished. It was Lukman again benefiting from some neat interplay by Fulham Duo, Alex Iwobi, and Calvin Bassi. 2-0 it ended, and Nigeria were through. Equatorial Guinea had been the most unforgettable side in the group stage and had made headlines after demolishing host Cote d'Ivoire 4-0. They had tournament top scorer Emilio Onsue, who had also grabbed headlines with his hat-trick and brace respectively. They had scored 9 goals in the groups, including back-to-back 4-goal -back hauls, so they entered their tie against Guinea, brimming with confidence. Guinea had won only one and drawn one in their group, only falling to Senegal. 
They looked formidable themselves, but keeping this marauding Equatorial Guinean side at bay seemed a tough ask. They lined up with the back four of Isiaga Sila, Julian Janvier, Mukhtar Diakabi, and Ibrahim Diakite, hoping to do what no team had been able to do yet, keep a clean sheet against this team. The Equatorial Guinean trio of Pablo Garnett, Iban Salvador, and Jose Machin provided solid support to Nsue and had created for him all tournament. The first half was a KG affair with both teams failing to get a shot on target. It was expected as Guinea were wary of that attack, but 10 minutes into the second half, the first bit of drama happened. Federico Bicoro of Equatorial Guinea was sent off after planting his studs high. Guinea responded by bringing on striker Seru Girassi for Morgan Gilavogui with the idea to make their numerical advantage count. But not long after, an Equatorial Guinean free kick led to Iban Salvador being recklessly brought down. After a VAR review, a penalty was awarded. Emilio Nsue stepped up to take it. Until this game, he had been ruthless and impeccable in front of goal and was already the tournament's top scorer. Having missed a chance at the start of the second half, he was hoping to take this one. He stepped forward, sending the goalkeeper the wrong way, but he missed it, hitting the woodwork. His manager, Joan Mitchell's reaction to the miss became a meme moment that went viral. He opened his mouth wide in shock. Equatorial Guinea had missed their moment, and their opponents were going to make them pay. It took a while, but it finally happened in the most devastating fashion. With only a few seconds to go, the impressive Ibrahim Diakite made an intelligent run down the right, and his cross was met by the head of Mohamed Bayo. Jesus Owono, the Equatorial Guinean goalkeeper who had been one of their more impressive stars, could do nothing to save it. It went in, and Equatorial Guinea were out. They could not believe what had just happened, from being so dominant in the group stage to going out with a whimper in the round of 16. Drama was fully here now. Egypt and the Democratic Republic of Congo were up next. Egypt had drawn all their group games 2-2 and were still missing Mosala. Meanwhile, the DRC had proven to be a tough nut to crack, drawing all their group games as well. That meant that both teams had neither won nor lost coming into this game. Something had to give, surely. The Egyptian defense had proven to be the leakier of the two, however, considering two goals per match. The DRC attack wasn't particularly as potent though, scoring only two compared to the six that Egypt had scored. The first half began with Egypt on the front foot, culminating in a big chance from a cross which Hegazi sent over the bar. DRC had a chance of their own but couldn't get a shot on target. Eventually, the deadlock was broken. Egypt's defense lost concentration on a throw and the DRC capitalized. Yuan Wisa snuck in to deliver a deflected cross, which Meshak Elia converted at the back post into an empty net. But the DRC lead didn't last long. Egypt rallied quickly and their efforts were rewarded when Egazi won his team a penalty following a reckless play during a contested header by Dylan Batubin Sika. It was just before halftime and Egypt had a chance to go in level. Mustafa Mohamed, the only man to score in all the group games, stepped up to convert for his fourth goal of the tournament. From that point on, it was one-way traffic. DRC pushed and prodded, looking to go ahead but faced a resolute Egyptian defense that held on for extra time. But six minutes into extra time, Mohamed Amdi received a second yellow card after a terrible tackle. The DRC barrage increased, but the Egyptians weathered the storm to force penalties. Egyptian goalie Mohamed Abu Gabal, also known as Gabaski, had been the penalty hero of their run to the final at the 2021 edition. They were counting on him to be the hero again this time. He was their X-Factor. When the shootouts began, the Egyptians were the first to blink. Their second penalty taker, starman Mustafa Mohamed, who had converted his kick during regular time, sent his penalty wide. Arthur Maswaku of DRC was next up, hoping to take advantage of the Egyptian miss. He stepped up and ballooned the ball over the post. Parity was restored. The next six rounds of kicks were all converted before drama finally ensued in sudden death. 
It was goalkeeper Gabaski who would be the villain this time. He stepped forward to take the ninth penalty and sent it high, the ball hitting the crossbar on its way. DRC now had the advantage. Score and they were through. Their own goalkeeper Lionel Mpasi stepped up casually and with a smirk on his face converted to send Egypt packing. The DRC were through to the quarterfinals. Cape Verde and Mauritania locked horns for a ticket to the quarterfinals. Their battle was won involving teams many didn't give a chance. Cape Verde had won a group with Ghana and Egypt, while Mauritania had knocked out Algeria in a straight battle for qualification. History beckoned and both teams showed up to try to take charge. Cape Verde were favourites and they showed why. Captain Ryan Mendes flew right into it, coming close twice early on. He seemed up for it and could easily have scored. One Mauritanian moment aside, it was wave after wave of Cape Verde moments as they inched closer and closer to scoring. The first half ended goalless, but more of the same came in the second half with Cape Verde peppering shots and forcing saves from goalkeeper Babakar Nias, who had been impeccable against Algeria in Mauritania's previous game. Well, it was Mauritania who would get the biggest chance of the game around the hour mark. Striker Suleiman An forced a 1v1 chance with goalkeeper Vozinha, but somehow hit his shot wide while struggling to keep his balance. That was the moment for them. By this point, the tension was rising. Cape Verde kept going, unsettling the Mauritanian defense and forcing another big save from Nias. But with less than five minutes to go in regulation time, an error at the back forced Nias into a rash challenge to save his team. He brought down Gilson Tavares in the process, and the referee did not hesitate in pointing to the spot. Penalty. Ran Mendes took it and made no mistake, striking a fierce shot down the middle. This was the moment, and everyone knew it. Mauritania had nothing left in the tank, and the final whistle soon went. It was over. Cape Verde had made it through. The valiant Mauritanians bowed out. Then came the big one, defending champion Senegal up against hosts Cote d'Ivoire, who had barely snuck into this round. Normally, this would be billed as a tough clash between two contenders, and everyone would be expecting a tight game decided on margins. But because of how awfully the Ivorians had performed in the groups, and how they made it into the knockouts, there was a lot of pessimism about their chances. The team had been written off, especially as Senegal were the only perfect team in the groups and had played all their opponents off the park. No one knew what to expect of new coach MS Faye. The 4-0 defeat against Equatorial Guinea under previous coach Jean-Louis Gasset had showed them to be disjointed and there for the taking. The only thing they had going for them was the fierce home support, whatever momentum they could find, and a possible new manager bounce if that even applied in national knockout tournaments of this nature, as this situation was quite unprecedented. It took less than four minutes for Senegal to do the expected. A smart cross by Sadio Mane down the left found Abib Diallo, who brought the ball down with his chest before rifling a shot into the roof of the net. The stadium went quiet. The fans must have been thinking to themselves, here we go again with this team. They had not led in any game since beating Guinea-Bissau in the opener, and they had done poorly when losing in the previous two games, showing a lack of ideas. How were they to come back against this Senegal side? The game went on with Senegal looking the more confident side and Cote d'Ivoire dominating possession without really creating anything. Senegal had them where they wanted them. But by the hour mark, it was clear that something needed to change. Faye sent on Nicolas Pepe for Uma Diakite and Simon Adingra for the experienced Max Gridel. They began to push Senegal with their new lease of life, but they needed more as time was running out. Faye then threw on Frank Kessie, Sebastian Allaire, and Christian Kwame with desperation setting in. He threw everything at it because they had to have a go. They put pressure on the Senegalese players, urged on by the vocal crowd who were now starting to believe they could rattle their opponents. Many had expected Senegal to outplay them, but seeing the Ivorian players step up and push back had rallied the crowd. They started to create more, 
the best of which was a long ball that found Pepe in behind for a big chance. The star of their 2021 campaign hit a shot which was well saved by Eduard Mendy. A few minutes later though, they finally got their breakthrough. A through ball was missed by Kwame but found Pepe in behind after he had continued his run. He touched the ball and was brought down by Mendy. It was a stonewall penalty. It took some checks but it was finally given. Frank Essier took it and scored sending the entire stadium into raptures. They were not going out, not tonight. That moment and that goal changed everything. In extra time, it was more of the same, but Senegal eventually had a huge chance with the ball finding money at the back post, but Yaya Fofana saved well to deny him. Not much happened after that, with the tension at an all-time high, and eventually, it was time for penalties. The first two rounds were perfect. Kalidou Koulibaly, Nicolas Pepe, Pape Matassa, and Christian Kwame all converted. But then, Senegal blinked. Musa Niakate stepped forward, sent Yaya Fofana the wrong way, but hit the woodwork. Cote d'Ivoire had their break and they wouldn't look back. Senegal were now there for the taking. Sebastian Allaire converted his penalty to give them the lead. And then Bamba Dieng, Sergio Rie, and Sidio Mane converted theirs too. It now came down to one kick, one which would send Cote d'Ivoire through. It was Franck Cassier once again one of the best penalty takers in the world. The Ivorian players could be seen looking confident, assured that he would convert that penalty no matter what. He stepped up, eyeballed Mendy, and side-footed a shot into the roof of the net, leaving the goalkeeper flat-footed. In the real sense, this was not an upset, but it felt very much like one. Not many had given the Ivorians a chance. Twice on the brink of elimination, they were now quarter-finalists. Mali and Burkina Faso were next. These were two sides who had a reputation for being dark horses, countries with balanced squads who were capable of pulling off upsets and going deep in tournaments. So far, Mali had looked the more formidable side, winning their group without a defeat and conceding only one goal. Burkina Faso, on their part, had lost one and conceded four goals, more than the three they had scored. It took less than three minutes for their defense to be breached once again. A rebound from an initial header was turned into his own goal by Edmond Tapsoba to give Mali the lead. Burkina Faso had not shown any ability to turn things around after going behind and this looked like an uphill task. Before they could even find their bearing, they had to deal with more Malian attacks. Their defense looked shaky and the Malians tested goalkeeper Eva Kofi again and again. They were hanging on by the ropes. They were probably relieved when their halftime whistle went as they got a breather and could regroup again. Whatever instructions they got at halftime definitely didn't change much as they considered right after the restart. Lassin Sinayoko ran onto a through ball by captain Amari Traore and delivered a neat finish to give his country a 2-0 lead. That leaky Burkina Bay defense had left a huge space behind which the Malians exploited, but the deficit was soon halved with the next Burkina Faso attack. The ball hit Mohamed Konate's hand as he contested an aerial duel in the box and the referee blew for a penalty. After a quick VR check, Bertrand Traore expertly dispatched the penalty, setting up a nervy final 30 minutes. Burkina Faso turned up the heat, setting up attack after attack in their search for an equalizer the Malian defense seemed up to the task, thwarting them. In the 89th minute, they thought they had finally found the equalizer. A cross from the right was headed in by Isufu Dayo, but he was miles offside. That had been the moment for the Burkina Bay. Mali held on and advanced to the quarterfinals, setting up a big clash against host Cote d'Ivoire. The final game of the round was between Morocco and South Africa. Both sides had shown a lot of solidity in defense. South Africa had kept clean sheets in their last two games and looked very impressive in possession. Morocco had also kept two clean sheets out of three, conceding only once. They had come into the tournament with a lot of pressure on their shoulders after their incredible run to the World Cup semi-finals at the end of 2022. A lot was expected of this team regarded as a special generation. 
that had underperformed at AFCON. They had not reached the semi-finals since finishing runners-up in 2004. This team looked capable of finally doing it and possibly going all the way. South Africa themselves hadn't reached a semi-final either since 2000. Now they both wanted to take a step towards that, with a place in the quarterfinals up for grabs. The South Africans started well, putting pressure on the Moroccan goal early on. They created decent chances and showed that they were not afraid of the heralded Moroccan team. For much of the first half, it showed more purpose in possession before the Moroccans found their bearings and grew into the game, creating some chances late in the half. It was more of the same early in the second half as Morocco kept knocking, but it was South Africa who would take the lead, stunning their opponents. A through ball found evidence Makopa just onside and he finished low pass Yassin Bonu to give his country the advantage. The Moroccans, however, kept their composure and set for the equaliser, but the South African defence, led by the impressive Rowan Williams in goal, dealt with things. Eventually, Morocco got a lifeline. A shot by Ayubel Kabi in the box was deflected by the outstretched hand of Mothobi Mvala. Penalty it was, and Achara Fakimi had the chance to bring his country level. The PSG man, sporting an interesting beard in this tournament, hit his effort high and hard, crashing it against the crossbar on its way over the post. Drama! The Moroccans couldn't believe it, but they rallied to go again. With 10 minutes added at the end of regulation, it still looked possible, until Sofian Amrabat got himself sent off for a professional foul just a minute into extra time. They had left spaces behind in chasing the equalizer, leading to this situation and forcing Amrabat to do what he did. The resulting free kick was taken by Teboho Mokwena, who had played a blinder all game. His free kick evaded the stretching Bunu, hitting the woodwork before going in. 2-0 it was and the Moroccans were done. There was no coming back now, especially not with 10 men. The final minutes quickly went by and South Africa were through. The Moroccans, touted as one of the favorites, were out in the round of 16. Two remarkable starts stood out as the round of 16 came to a close. First, no team that had played in the quarterfinals of the previous edition had made it to the quarterfinals of this one. All eight had been knocked out. Burkina Faso, Tunisia, Egypt, Gambia, Senegal, Morocco, Cameroon, and Equatorial Guinea, all out. Also, all Africa's representatives at the 2022 World Cup had all exited the tournament. Ghana, Morocco, Senegal, Cameroon, and Tunisia, all out. This was already clearly an all-timer tournament, and these knockouts had delivered thus far. There was no doubt that more was in store as the quarterfinals were ushered in. And boy, was there more. A new dimension to the drama. 